So decarbonization means reducing CO2 emission during the life cycle of a product. So for instance, if you consider our helicopters, we can divide and define three different main phases. The first one is about production. Here we have to put the stress on the choice of the good raw materials and on the processes that we use, as well as to the supply chain. The second phase is about in-service use. And in this phase, the main contributor is fuel consumption because that's the main reason for CO2 emission in this operational phase at our customers. The third phase is about the end of life of the helicopter, where we have to make sure that the materials we have used to build it can be recycled as far as possible. So full decarbonization by 2050 is a huge technical challenge. For aviation today, the target has been set to 50% reduction of CO2 by 2050. And at Airbus Helicopter, we consider that this target is applicable to our products too. But we haven't waited for this target to be set to start working in that direction. For instance, on thermal engines, we have already in the last 50 years reduced the emissions by 50%, which is already a good step. And in addition to that, we have also allowed the use of some alternative fuels on our helicopters that can be used today, which also allow a CO2 reduction too. Beside that, beside thermal engine aspects, we have also worked on hybridization and for sure on full electrification on our eVTOL demonstrator for UAM market. Point. We have seen that fuel consumption is responsible of main, mainly CO2 emissions during the whole life of the helicopter. So that's why we want to focus on it. So which are the factors that determine this fuel consumption? We can list three of them. The first one is about the efficiency of the platform of the helicopter itself, which means that we have to try to make it as aerodynamic as possible and as light as possible to make sure that the power we require for flight is the minimum. The second aspect, the second factor is the propulsion system. We have to make sure that its efficiency is very high in order to reduce the consumption and therefore the emission of CO2. The last factor, the last aspect is more an operational aspect. It's about mission profile and procedures that can be optimized in order to reduce consumption as well. Yes, of course, uh, we did the work in many directions. So we should know that the efficiency of diesel is very high, it's almost 45%, when the turbine is only 30%. The problem of the diesel engine is the weight, which is much higher than the turbine. And since then, we worked on the improvement of the turbine aerodynamic cycle, which is more efficient than working on the diesel. So the diesel, we did all the tests, we performed the flight tests, but we are more oriented now to the improvement of the thermodynamic cycle of the normal turbine. We are pushing in all directions, is the principle of innovation, but the SAF are key. The SAF, is a, uh, we can use them already on the aircraft and they can be, can be produced with the waste elements, with waste oil. And we, with SAF, we enter in very natural, virtuous circle. So we are looking to all options at the same time. For sure, uh, sustainable aviation fuels are already a reality because our helicopters can fly today with some fuels, certified fuels, which contain a certain amount of SAF. So this is already an option which is available sure to go beyond 100% SAF, we need to work together with fuel providers, with engine manufacturers to make sure that the use of 100% SAF becomes available and usable for customers. Okay, so hydrogen really is the future in the second step of the, our roadmap. The first step, it will be really the energy need reduction but all the work we do on the basic helicopter and then we can introduce hydrogen. Hydrogen, to be efficient, must be in the liquid form. It means the storage is minus 253 degrees. So externally, we will not see the difference, but internally, reservoir will be completely different. It will be double thickness reservoir, with very special regulation system, which allows to keep the temperature low and the pressure regulation when we consume the hydrogen. So it will be completely different fuel uh, supply system. 
True, I think it's obvious today that to meet decarbonization target, we need to change our propulsion system. It has to evolve and improve its characteristics to meet the targets that we have mentioned before. So let's have a look to the option that we have. In terms of thermal engine, we can still improve thermodynamic cycle and get some additional points of efficiency. But we can also use other fuels, like sustainable aviation fuels, for instance, low carbon fuels, hydrogen, in order to decrease CO2 emissions radically by using the same kind of technology that we use today, a similar one. The second option that we have is also hybridization, and we are really pushing at R&T level at Airbus Helicopters to find the good mix between thermal and electric energy to obtain significant improvement in terms of emissions. So the third option is full electrification, a full electric propulsion system that we are really testing today in our eVTOL demonstrator, CT Airbus, which is addressing urban air mobility.